in this video I want to talk about the zero bank feed and what happens when things don't quite go according to plan. We all know how amazing the Zero Bank Rec is and it's even more amazing if Zero links directly to your bank and your transactions are fed in. Now they could be fed in through a direct feed or they could be fed in through a third party Yodly feed. Either of these should work really well for you but what happens when you can't do either of these? Well there is an alternative. I've got another short video that shows you what to do if you have to import a bank statement and you can get it from your bank in the recommended format which is OFX or QIF which works brilliantly. We don't need to understand these formats, the chances are you can't look at them but you can go to your bank, online banking and you can download a transaction in one of those formats and upload to Xero very easily. But what if even that doesn't happen? you're left with the dreaded CSV import. Now in this video I want to talk you through the steps to get a CSV import into Xero and the reason I want to do it is I want to explain that if that's what you have to resort to it's actually not the end of the world. It might take you five minutes a day to do it but it's still a worthwhile exercise and I would still recommend zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to talk you through step by step how I recommend getting your bank statement into zero when all that you have to work with is a download that is a CSV file. Let's go and take a look. Okay we want to get our bank transactions into zero but a direct feed is not an option and all that we are able to get is a CSV file. So what do we do? Well, we're on our dashboard, we've got our bank account and we go to the three dots to the right of it and then we choose the option to import a statement. And you can see that once we get in here, we have the option to import a CSV statement. If we want to do that, there's a zero template that we can use. So if we select download the zero template and let's just open it and take a look at it. Okay here we have the zero template and you can see the fields that zero have suggested and the interesting thing is that there are only two fields with an asterisk which means these are the only two fields that are compulsory. So provided you have a date and an amount, you can pull your transactions into zero. The amount will be positive if it's money coming in and it will be negative if it's money being spent. Yes, there are other fields you can use, payee, description, reference, and we'll kind of forget about check number, but that is an option. So you can add these fields if you have them, but they're not compulsory. So it's a good idea to download this statement and save it so that you've got it available, so that you know what information is actually needed to input to zero. So here's an example that I've prepared for us to use. So what I have on the left is this is a download from my bank account. So I've gone into online banking and I've chosen to download a statement and I've chosen the CSV option. Now this actually is the RBS format. Depending on your bank, the format of what you download will be different. So we've got the information that we need and that's all that's important. So if you look at the fields, we've got a transaction date, transaction type, so that would be debits, credits, payings, not really that important. Sort code, not really important. Account number, not important. Description is important, so I've added descriptions here. We would expect them to be a bit more meaningful than my demo ones, but you get the idea. So then when you've spent money, it's in a column for debit amount, and if you've received money, it's in a credit amount column, and then we end up with finally a balance column when we download in this example from RBS. The balance column is great because we're going to refer back to this. So we're going to remember this figure that the balance at the end of the day is 1998668. 
So we know this has been a pain, but in reality, we've been able to go on to online banking and download our transactions from the day before, and that's only taken us two to three minutes. Now we already have the template downloaded from Zero, and we'll keep that and have it available. So all that we want to do is pull the important information from our download into the proper format so we can then upload import to Zero. So I'm going to go to the download and I'm going to choose the date information. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into my template. The next field I must have is the amount. We know that if it's money received, it will be positive. If it's money spent, it will be negative. Now, on this demo, I've only got 10 transactions. You could have hundreds of transactions. If you've got hardly any, probably the easiest thing is just actually a key in the figures because we know that 39 is positive because it's money received and 15 is negative because it's money spent. So we would just continue filling in that data. But clearly, if we have hundreds and hundreds of lines, we don't want to do that. So what would we do? I would suggest that we create a calculation, a formula in zero. So we would start it with equals, and then I want to say pick up that figure, and then I'm going to add to this formula, and I'm going to say, and then deduct anything that's been spent. Click on it and hit enter. Okay, so that's given us the figure 39. If we look at the calculation, it's going to the spreadsheet we want and it's going to sell G2, which is the credit amount, and then it's going to deduct anything and sell F2, which is the debit spent amount. Now I need to do one thing here. I need to remove these dollar signs. And this is simply so that the formula will work if I copy it down. If I copy it down and leave the dollar signs, it's not going to work. It's actually still going to look at the same lines, same fields as previously. So you don't need to understand that if formula is not your strong point. Just be aware that we want to say pick up the money received figure and deduct from it any money spent. And then if we go in that field, we can simply copy that formula down. Now you could have a blank spreadsheet with the formula here already and then just have it picking up once you've got your information. And that's us got the amounts, but there's one final thing we want to do. These cells are formulae, they're calculation, the zero's not going to like that. So I'm going to go on, select the area, and I'm going to right click, I'm going to say copy, I'm going to right click again, paste special, and I'm going to choose values and say OK. I'm going to hit escape just to get rid of the flashing square. And then what you will see is these are actually amounts now. There's no formula, no calculation. It's simply the amounts. And that means that zero will now be happy. Payee, we don't have that information. If we had, we would copy it over. But we do have description. So I'm going to go to the description field select them, right click, I'm going to say copy, move over to my template, right click and paste. And that is all that we're going to need. So we've got the date, we've got the amounts and we've got our description. I'm going to save this file and because it's a CSV you always get this warning message and we just say continue. We're ready now to head back into Zero. So we're back in zero and we're on the dashboard and then just as a reminder, on our bank account we go to the three dots and we choose import a statement. We go to browse, we choose the file that we've completed and we have saved and we say open. And then we finish it off by import. Okay. Brilliant, 10 statement lines have been imported and there were no duplicates. Sometimes when you import, if it's the first time that you've done it, you will get a screen 
asking you to confirm the information that you've import. And if you bear with me, I'll be able to show you a screenshot of that. So this screen maybe looks a little bit daunting, but if you look down, all it's asking is you to confirm that what you've input as date is going to go to the transaction date field. What you've input as amount is going to go to the transaction amount field. And what you've input as description is going to description. It's also asking you what the date format is. So we know that it's UK, so it's day, month, year. Don't import the first line because they're headings, that's exactly correct. And you just say save. We can see that our statement balance is 199868. And if your memory is good, we know that that's the correct figure. So if we scroll down, we can go on to page two. There we have all our new transactions. Description four, five, six, through to description 10. There's our data imported to zero. As always, if you like my videos, please let me know that you like them. And why don't you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new videos are uploaded each week. Until next time, happy zeroing. <music>